This was the old rotary encoder knob. I had a problem with it. It was just too damn big. It stuck up too much and was going to make it difficult to make a top plate that could go over it. Another problem with it is that you had to remove the knob entirely, which is press fit quite strongly uh, in order to remove the top plate, which is very inconvenient. Um, so I came up with a better solution. <clears throat> Enter top plate 2.0. You see that? The uh, downside is it uses, you know, twice as many magnets, but the pluses are just too awesome. So the, uh, how do I explain this? <clears throat> On the underside here, is, so this printed flat like this. So this top part is super smooth, right? But underneath is kind of that rough top surface of um, a 3D printed part. And what's interesting is I took the rough part, the top layer of the uh, of that little maggot ring there, uh, and I made it so it's rough against rough. Basically, it's not smooth against smooth. It's, it's rough against rough. And that was after some much experimentation, and you can actually feel the little bumps. And I counted, and it's somewhere between like, it's like 26 little tactile bumps per turn, which is just like, you know, a normal rotary encoder. Now, they're not quite as strong as a normal rotary encoder, but it's got those little tact, so you can, you could actually, I could actually configure this so that it, um, you know, every little tactile bump matches with uh, a turn motion, you know, an actuation in the analog rotary encoder software. I mean, it's, that's the point of rotary encoders, though, is like you can set the, you know, you can set the resolution to whatever the heck you want. Um, but yeah, I think I made, I think I made a, a great improvement here. Look at how much shorter it is, right? And the other benefit is that the whole knob comes off, right? So if you imagine the top plate will have a little hole in it for this little shaft to poke through, and this is about the same height as a key switch. So I just take one that I got right here. You can see it'll sit right above the plate, right about there. So there's plenty of room to fit that in there. So I just need a little, uh, six millimeter sized hole a little bit bigger you know tolerances for the for the shaft and then when i magnetically pull the whole top plate off the shaft will come right along with it which should be really nice and convenient and like the only problem with this method is you can knock it off like that but if there's a uh, hole through the top plate that won't happen you can it's not going to shift left and right like that so it seems like the perfect solution except there's only one problem the button. So if I push, I can press the button. It feels great like this. Can you hear it? And that's because the the uh, met the top part here is bending just a smidge to press that button. But when I put the uh, knob on here, it's too tall. It's too wide to press. Like if I move it to the center here, then I can press it. So I need like a just a tiny little spacer or something in the middle, um, so that when I press it down. It only applies pressure in the very middle, and that should fix that problem. Um, but I don't want to take up too much of the uh, hole here, so we'll see how it goes. But that's the latest and greatest on my uh, analog keyboard unit macro pad. I should have it assembled soon, I hope. Depends on how busy I am.